What's up YouTube? This is Russell from Russell's Reef coming to you with episode 18 of the Waterbox 70.3 build. In this episode I'm going to go over what I've been doing to try to turn around the tank a little bit. Uh, last time we had a little bit of bleaching events due to some uh, parameter swings and lack of nutrients in the system. So I just want to go over what I've been doing and how it's been working out. Thanks for tuning in. Let's take a look. So jumping right in here, um, as most of you guys know, last month I had a little bit of a bleaching event. So I've just been trying to uh, get everything back on track for the last three or four weeks. Uh, it's been going pretty well. As you can see, that Monty cap is almost fully colored up again. So that's great news. I have been basically looking to do uh, two things with the system. My alkalinity was running about a little over nine when things started going bad. So I want to lower that back down to eight. Um, it's probably running around 8.3 now, which is good. And then I also wanted to heavily feed the tank. Uh, for the last three weeks, I've just been bombing the tank with food. Pretty much uh, broadcast feeding, refroids every day, uh, broadcast feeding oyster feast every day, and feeding probably two or three cubes of mysis every day. So that is probably triple what I was doing before. Um, I was able to do this because at the current time, I didn't really have any nuisance allergies. Nothing was really taking over. So uh, my plan was to just keep feeding and feeding and feeding until we see something bad like cyanobacteria, uh, which eventually happened. And once I noticed the cyanobacteria, I just kind of cut down on my feeding, um, mainly the broadcast feeding. I stopped with the uh, refroids and the oyster feast every day. I switched that to about um, probably every three days. So here we'll just go around the tank and kind of see the results. Um, I can honestly say my tank has never looked better. Uh, the SPS are really coloring up and we're finally starting to get some colonies to take off. Uh, that Spain bow from BC, the blue one or the green one with the blue tips in the middle, starting to become a colony. Um, lots of little shoots jumping out, which is awesome. The Hawkins Echinata is kind of turning into a colony. Unfortunately, the green Slimer, I had to frag. Uh, it was STNing around the base. So I tried to cover the STN with super glue, but it just kept advancing and advancing. So eventually I had to frag off the base, which is unfortunate because it had like three or four shoots about to pop out of there. Uh, another thing I did was the Satosa down there, the orange guy. He used to be up on that rock a little higher and he was always pink. And sometimes he kind of lost almost all of his color. So. What I did was moved him down into that, uh, underneath that cave. And so far it's been doing good. I'm um, not sure if we'll be able to live there permanently just because there's not much flow, but it's definitely turning orange and looks really great. Currently on the tank, I took out all of the mechanical filtration. So no more filter socks or um, filter floss in the system which is awesome. I mean, it's just one less thing to do. And to be honest, I haven't really noticed a difference. So hopefully that's permanent. I won't have any more uh, mechanical filtration. It'll just be basically the skimmer. Um, as far as the refugium goes in the sump, we started out with using Cheeto in it, but that kind of died off when I had the hair algae outbreak. After that, it was mainly filled with hair algae and now current state of the system, it's pretty much barren. Um, I stuck my emerald crab down there and he seems to take care of all the algae that grows. So I'm still keeping the light on every, every night just for stability's sake. But um, my current plans for that is just leave it be because right now the system is looking pretty good. Uh, another small change I made to the system was I swapped out my or half of my old Miracle Mud with new Miracle Mud. Um, I'm definitely skeptical on this product. I'm not sure that it does anything. It probably doesn't. It's expensive and it's dirt. But after I changed it out, I have to admit, my SPS have never looked better. I mean, the, the week in the week following after I 
changed it out. I had amazing polyp extension. Um, things are really starting to take off. So I'm not sure if it's just a happy coincidence or there's something in that miracle mud that when you get a new batch of it, just the SPS love it. But I, I have to say that I definitely noticed something after changing it out. So I'm not sure that I would recommend it, but it's just something to think about. And we'll see six months from now when I change it out again, if we have the same results. So although I did see a lot of positive effects of feeding so much, broadcast feeding every day, there have definitely been negative effects too. Um, as my zoas and pallies have all taken off from the extra food, so have a couple Aptasia that I have. And for the first time, I'm really dealing with some vermited snails. Um, I think I've had these in every system, but they just exploded in this tank. I mean, they are everywhere. And they shoot out that little mucus web and it kind of irritates all the SPS and closes a lot of the uh, zoas. So that's something that I'm gonna have to think about how I'm gonna attack. Um, I think it's pretty easy. You can just dab super glue on them or something. It's not something that I usually would like, I kind of let it run its course naturally usually, but I'm definitely noticing it is irritating a lot of the SPS and even killing some of the zoas. So just those vermited snails everywhere was definitely a, a minus of feeding so much. So usually at this point of the tank's life cycle for me, um, I beat the hair algae and kind of the ugly phase. So usually for my tanks, what comes next is the bologna or the bubble algae. Um, this is one algae that I really can't stand. Um, it's just really annoying. And once it starts to get a hold, it's just kind of a nightmare to deal with for me at least. Um, so that's one thing I have also been noticing. I'm starting to get a little patches of bubble algae around the tank. Um, but I guess that's just something to deal with. Hopefully it doesn't take full hold of the system and just stays in different areas. Um, but it's definitely something that I will be watching out for along with the, uh, two, now giant aptasias that have grown from all the broadcast feeding um, trying to decide what i want to do with those guys usually i go the route of peppermint shrimps they have worked great in the past for me but the last peppermint shrimp i got like to devour all of my lps so i'm not going to risk that with my torch in the tank so I think I'm gonna try to go with either a calc paste over the Aptasia to remove them, or maybe the, there's a new product called F Aptasia or something, it looks like it would work pretty well. Um, usually I wouldn't do much about it, but these guys are getting big and they're definitely closing up all the, the zoas that they're around. And I kinda just wanna take care of it before it really takes off, especially with the way my tank is going. I'm feeding more, so that's just more opportunity for them to take hold and really start to make a mess in the system. And uh, one other thing that I did over the last couple of weeks that I wanted to share with you guys was I tested all of my parameters. So I tested my nitrate, my phosphate. Um, for once, my nitrate was above one, uh, it was around four which I think is fine. Um, I've actually heard some people say that like it shouldn't be below three-ish, but I think that's crazy. I've, I've ran plenty of systems where it's 10 or 20 even. Um, so I was glad to see that at five. Uh, the phosphates were around 0.1-ish, maybe a little lower. So I think that's a good range for me. It looks like it's a good range for the tank. So we'll try to keep it there. Alkalinity is running around 8.3 and calcium, I believe was 470. So a little high. And then magnesium, I think was 1300 ish. So I did actually test all my parameters for once and Everything seems to be, you know, good enough, right in line. So nothing to worry about there. 
So moving forward, I'm just gonna just keep doing what I'm doing, try to keep it stable because I think we're right in that happy spot right now. Things are starting to take off and the tank is really starting to look great. Well, that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.